Welcome to Journey in the Word. It's good to have you back with us. I'm Bill Williams, and we are going to look today at seasons. But before we do, join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today to look at your Word, to look at some things about how you've created life for us, I pray that you would give us wisdom to recognize uh, the seasons that we're in and the appropriateness of our behavior in those times as we look forward uh, towards uh, that, that ultimate time of harvest that you have for us in eternity. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as we, uh, living here in Alaska, sometimes the winter gets a little bit, a little bit heavy on us. Uh, enough snow, uh, enough cold, I'm ready to have a little more sunshine, and, uh, and ready to, to kind of, you know, be outside more. And, and a lot of folks go on vacation to get a little bit of that from other places and come back here to live in where they are. But we've got, we've got these seasons that we have every year. We go through them. We have, we have uh, spring, the season of, of new life. Summer, the season of growing. Fall, the season of harvest. And then winter, this season of rest. And, and God made this for us every, every year. In Ecclesiastes, the, uh, Solomon says this in chapter 3, starting in verse 1. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up that which is lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I have seen the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. The task that God has given the sons of men to occupy themselves. God's given all these times, these seasons for us in our lives to to work together. And there are appropriate things to do within each of those seasons. There's appropriate ways of being. And God has given us these ways of being within those seasons of life. And, and if we, we look a little further down in Ecclesiastes 3... Starting in verse, in verse uh, 11, he says, He, God, has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart, yet so that man will not find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in his labor, it is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will remain forever. God gives us these times, and He gives us these ways of being and these things to do. And 
while we're engaged in such things, Solomon says there's nothing better. There's nothing better than to sit back in, in whatever season you're in doing what is appropriate and with rejoicing, thank God for the gift of time and purpose that he gives us. Because we don't really see what God is doing in the grand scheme of things. We don't see all of God's work played out and what our part in it is. But with each season that we're in, we have something that we need to do. Some good that needs to be done there. And if we see, you know, the seasons of, of life that we see in nature, the season of, of life, of life being born, the season of planting and growing, the season of harvesting and the season of resting, all of our life isn't one specific season. If you think your place is one specific thing and that's it, uh, that's going to be a life of frustration. There has to be a time of planting. There has to be a time of growing. There has to be a time of reaping. And then there has to be a time of rest. And, and we can see them in, in these larger chunks of time, these three-month blocks in, in, a, in a year. But, but really, if you look at the Sabbath, God said there are six days to work and there is one day to rest. There's one day to remember that God ceased from his labor in the, in the beginning and that we are to stop what we're doing and to reflect on what, what God did then. And so even, even in a week, there has to be a time of, of rest in a time of labor or even in a day. In a day, we can't work and be involved 24 hours because we have to have rest. Our body needs rest every day. But yet we don't rest all day every day unless we happen to be sick or, you know, or we need it for some reason. Paul says this in Galatians chapter 6. He says in verse six, chapter 6 verse 4, Each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another, for each one will bear his own load. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So Paul says that we are to examine the things that we are doing, that we're engaged in, and, and as we do, we can boast in in that we've chosen to be a part of what God's got planned for us, that this work that God has laid out for us, that we join Him in, there is some pride in that. Now, it's not pride about, about I'm so great. It's pride that we're allowed to join with God in what we've done. And then Paul gives a warning. He says that... 
we are not to be deceived because God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. If we think there will be no consequences to our actions, to our behavior, then we are deceiving ourselves. And we are mocking God if we think we're not subject to what, to, to this, this teaching of sowing and reaping. There is a season of our life in which we are sowing. There, is, there are seasons, even in a week, that we sow things. That we are in this, we are in this process of sowing things into the relationships that we have. We sow uh, our words to the people who are around us. We sow our actions into this world. And there comes times when we will reap what we've put out there. Whether it be of the flesh that will end in corruption or whether it be of the spirit that will end in eternal life. And then he, he, he leaves us. So there's this, these seasons that we, that we engage in and we are to examine how we are in each of those seasons because there's an appropriate way to act, and then there's not an appropriate way to act. And then as we do those things, we look forward. We look forward to that time. And it says, while we have opportunity, we look forward to these opportunities of these seasons that are laid out in front of us, knowing that they're going to bring back a harvest. And what are we going what are we going to be harvesting at the end of this season and the beginning of the next one? I have a couple of I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is and this one's kind of a you know an easy question based on what we've just read, but what can we do to influence what we receive in the next season of our life? If we, if we see the things that we are doing, if we're examining ourselves right now and what we are doing, how can we influence what we're going to receive in the next season? What are some things that we could do? some works that we could be engaged in. The second one. The second uh, question is this. As you look at where you are, as you are examining your life right now, what season of life are you in? If you read through Ecclesiastes 3 and you see and you see that there's a time that there's a time for resting. There's a time for allowing people to serve you. There's a time of serving others. There's a time of of building and there's a time of of tearing down. There's a time of searching and looking and then there's a time where, where we let go of the search. Where are you now in your life? And where would you like to be headed in your life? Because as we examine ourselves and find out what season we're in, know that that season is going to end. If it's a good season, if it's a difficult season, if it's a, a praise season, or if it's, a, if it's a, a mourning season, whatever season you may be in, know that it's not forever. It is just a season. And, and, it, will, and it will change. But another thing to know 
about whatever season that you are in. Jesus, whenever he was resurrected from the dead, he met with his apostles. And before he left, before he he left physically in Matthew 28, he said this in verses 18 through 20. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Now listen here. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He tells his disciples, you go out and you, and you engage in the good work I have for you. And even though I might physically be gone, I have all authority and I'm not going to leave you. And that's the same for us. That's a message of hope for us that you're, you're in a season of struggle. Well, know that struggle is going to end, but you're not in it by yourself. Jesus is there with you. And he's not going to leave you in this season. If you'll re- remember that uh, poem, Footsteps, about the, the fellow who had the dream. And in the difficult times of life, in the storms, there was only one footprint of sand in the sand. And he questioned, why did you leave me? And the Lord responded back, those are the times that I carried you. Even if you don't see that second set of footprints, it doesn't mean that you're alone. Jesus promises that he'll be with you forever. So have hope for the future. And as you go through this week, I pray that God will bless you as you search for what season of life you're in and you reflect on what's the best way for you to walk through it in your journey towards him. You have a great week.